everyone. It is coming up on midnight of um, April 27th. I've just gotten out of seeing Avengers Endgame. And it is time to give my thoughts on the movie. As I'm watching this on opening weekend, and this video will be going up on the 1st of May for um, public viewing. Patreon backers will have gotten this basically as soon as YouTube finishes coding it. Um, more or less. I figured I would give my thoughts on the film. I want to keep this low spoilers. Um, not getting into any information that is not contained in the trailers for the film, and a little bit of speculation based on on-set photos that came out prior to the um, while the film was in production. Avengers Endgame ultimately, as most people suspected, the point of the film is undo the snap in some manner or another, and to do this, time travel is involved. If you remember Ant-Man and the Wasp, the conclusion of that, the post credit sequence, Ant-Man was in the quantum realm when the snap happened and got stuck there for a while until he was managed to, at a point in this film, manages to come back. And for various reasons, it is determined that the way to get the Infinity Snow Stones in a manner which allows them to undo the snap will require them to go back in time. And thus... That's basically the second act of the film. It was the second or third act of the film. Third act, most like. First act, immediately bringing repercussions from the snap. Second act, getting the getting the band back together to an extent. Everyone who was absent during the snap, uh, during the events of Infinity War, we're covering Hawkeye here, we're covering Captain Marvel, we're covering, of course, Ant-Man. Uh, and determining what needs to be done, and then finally, the time travel itself. How does this pan out, and kind of how does it work narratively? Because time travel is a thing which movies can do with a variety of degrees to excess. Excess and success. And the movie does bring this up. Like, it is a film that is aware that this is not the first time travel movie, and they do discuss other time travel movies and how they present the act of time travel here, particularly in context of okay, so how is this time tra how does time travel work in this universe kind of situation? I describe it like we're not quite going like they don't quite do as deep a cuts as whatever that time travel movie that was on Mystery Science Theater three thousand. Rift Drax did a live one of. The one with the plane and the Commodore 64. It wasn't an Amiga. That movie. They don't reference that one. But they could. They could have, and it would have fit. Um, no, this is a more focus on... But we do talk about, like, Get Back to the Future, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, uh, in particular in terms of how those movies depict time travel, both in the context of, oh, hey, these are... Depiction of a time travel people are familiar with, but also with the context of, if you think about how those movies handle cause that uh, temporal causality, like the bit with, well, yeah, actually several bits in those movies. That's where it, the thing about there in terms of Back to the Future. Hey, don't go back in time. Like, like if you go back in time and encounter yourself, what would happen? Type of situation, but also in the context of like, okay, if you remember from Bill and Ted's, there's the bit with the keys and. You, um, like stuff like that too. Like, okay, hey, we have to like we get into like discussions of closed loop, of temporal closed loops, and how those relate to the plot as well. That sort of thing. Um, it's interesting, and they pull that off very well. Uh, I don't get into reference of probably my favorite deep cut in terms of time travel and quantum mechanics, which is. Um, the Star Trek The Next Generation episode where Worf is shifting between quantum timelines. Um, whilst while Worf isn't time traveling in that storyline, um, the concept of splintering timelines based on, um, significant choices and that sort of thing is important. Like, that episode has the one where there's an Enterprise who, um was never able to beat the Borg, and it's the Ant Federation on the ropes, or, like, the last episode of that one is on the Enterprise, where 
they weren't able, or they were able to beat the Borg, but weren't able to save Picard and that sort of thing. Um, not to get too far of a tangent. But yeah, they, they, we get into this kind of broad strokes in terms of how time travel, uh, how we are going to handle time travel in this film. And it is very nicely done. Tonally, the film is kind of what you'd expect for um, the movie, considering the last couple films. We ha in terms of with how Infinity War and the post credit stinger of The Man and the Wasp ended, while still finding ways to interject a degree of levity, but in a kind of a dark manner. I mean, when you have Rocket um, involved, and yeah, and Tony Stark. Robert, who, again, Robert Downey Jr. is fantastic as Tony Stark. When you, when you have like these characters involved, you there is always going to be a degree of levity there because these are characters who are not just very quippy and witty, but in a organic and clever and engaging manner. That's the reason why we've lo why the Iron Man movies have done so well. And we we love Iron Man so much. So, with that uh, said. I'm not going to say who lives and who dies, but I will say that the ending is very bittersweet. Everyone's saying, oh, like, the, the vibe going into this is that this film is the end of an era. And that's a valid assessment to make. Um, not just because we've been building up for this confrontation with Thanos since the first Avengers movie. Uh, but also in the sense that I mean, like several of the actors have said, "Hey, I want to step away from these characters and maybe not play them anymore." Um, Gwyneth Paltrow has stated that she's retiring from acting, uh, and she's Pepper. Um, Chris Evans has stated that also stated his, in, his interest in retiring from acting and possibly even going, becoming a director. Um, and there's that. We have, and I mean, he's Cap. Like, whenever Steve, like, whenever Chris Evans decides to retire, I will say, not to get too political here, but Chris Evans, I, I almost called him Steve Rogers just now because he, if you follow him on Twitter, like I do, he has, in a way, become Cap. In a tremendous extent, like you, when you talk about uh, Heath Ledger and his method acting and how it caused him problems with the Joker and possibly led to his suicide, um, uh, like the, the minus of an actor in a superhero film becoming their role, and it, in that case, not doing great for Heath, not doing well for Heath Ledger. On the other hand, like Chris Evans as Steve Rogers, if being Steve Rogers led Chris e is this kind of thing which led Chris Evans to sort of become the person he is now. And when, when I see him tweet on social media and kind of becoming the best that um, that Amer representing the best of what America is in a lot of respects, um, that I think that that's a net win. But anyway, not to far tangent there um but this movie sets up like it wraps up a lot of things um a lot of plot threads a lot of character things and there are characters here where at the end of this movie i can see yeah i don't i can't see i do see that yeah this character is done character is going to step away and that's fine. Um, I f their story is, in a lot of respects, told. And I'm cool with that. Um, while, on the other hand, because of these characters stepping away, or the, the characters not being an active role in superheroing anymore after this film, I 
also see narrative potential for these characters going, well, not for these characters, but for other characters going forward, both in sense of the vacuum that these characters create and the repercussions of the, of, of the characters who are still sticking around in response to this. Um, seeing this movie makes me incredibly excited and, and, get, and interested in seeing Spider-Man Far From Home. I was already kind of interested in seeing it anyway, but it gives a lot more weight because of where Peter Parker is at the end of this movie. Spoiler, Peter Parker is someplace at the end of this movie that is not a pile of dust on an alien planet. Um, I will say that. I will give away that much. If in case you hadn't figured out that or suspected that Far From Home takes place after um, Endgame and not in between Homecoming and Infinity. Admittedly, they could put completely put me wrong and say, no, actually, um, home, Far From Home is during that gap, but what is, so, do I recommend seeing this movie? Yes, absolutely. I saw this movie in 3D. I did not see an IMAX because I was not able to get tuned to an IMAX showing because this movie was very heavily sold out in my local theater that has IMAX. I imagine if I did see an IMAX, it would be great there. I enjoyed it in what I saw in 3D. And... Again, without spoiling anything, like anything more than I've already have, and I've tried, and I've tried to keep that to minimum. The Marvel Universe is going in interesting places after this film. Uh, it's not. It's not. I will say this: it's not dramatically reshaped in quite the ways you think. Like this. What you you're not going to see in this movie, um, the use of the Infinity Stones to re rewrite reality, and then all of a sudden in the final take, Charles Xavier and Cyclops and all of them are there. That's that doesn't happen in this movie, um, but it puts where the story is going in an interesting place, and I appreciate that, and I dig that, and I hope, I really hope, um, the next wave of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, whatever form it takes, is, works out and goes well. Um, I am glad that the cameos we see in this movie, we get a, um, Stan's cameo, I mean, it's, cameo in Captain Marvel was, is gonna be really hard to top. Not just because of how that movie kind of leaned into, hey, thank you, Stan, but also that's probably the one Stan cameo that's Stan as Stan, and I dig that. Ah. Uh, and so there's that. I will say the one thing that we did not get in this movie, and I hope, beyond hope, we get this as a bonus feature on the Blu-ray is make sure I get this character's name right. Louise. Okay. Michael Pena's character. We do not get a recap by Louise of the Marvel Universe. Uh, uh, of of the important narrative beats to date. And we get some interesting deep cuts. And I would love to get the point of view recap, the Louise style stream of consciousness recap. Um, I hope to God, when the, again, in the, in the Blu-ray, I hope that's a bonus feature. I hope that's the, hey, want to get, I want to get quickly up to speed on the Marvel, on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let Louise help you. Um, and then it's based, and then we get Michael Pena voiceover com, um, dialogue combined with like the actors from like these actors who they get all the way back from these various films. So you, the, the nice thing with time travel, again, characters who are dead show up and played by their act, by their, um, by their actors. And it's fantastic. So if, if I have one minor complaint, 
one minor complaint for bring people back is I do is and this is one I had with uh Infinity War as well is when we had the Red Skull um as the guardian to the Mind Stone. And we get a little bit of that here. Um we didn't get um Hugo Weaving back. And I wish we kind of brought him back. I understand like the guy they cat got casting him's fine. But still, you know. Hey. So I enjoyed the film. I hope if you've seen it, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Please give your thoughts and leave your thoughts in the comments. I now as a moderation note, um for avoid spoilers in the comments below. Um for like the first month, maybe two, if you post spoilers in the comments, like any sort of major spoilers, character deaths, that sort of thing, I will delete your posts. Don't be a dick. Give people a chance to enjoy the movie for themselves and see it for themselves and see the and be surprised by what happens in this film. We'll give them those moments. And that pretty much covers that. Um, thank you very much for watching. And we will return to our regularly scheduled programming next month. Not month, but next week with uh, with Legend of the Force. And this month is of Mart of May is going to be very film heavy. We have I have decided I'm going to see Detective Pikachu. I had always intended to see John Wick. Um, and then we have uh, Nintendo Power retrospectives at the end of the month. Catch you then. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.